writing to learn. Poetry, Poets, and Becoming Writers. Unit 1, Lesson 3. Part 1. Guiding Questions. These are questions that you'll be thinking about throughout the entire module. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? Today's learning targets. I can get the gist of pages 6 through 11 of Love That Dog. I can explain what Jack understands about poetry. I can identify characteristics of poetry when analyzing the poem, stopping by woods on a snowy evening. We are continuing to read the novel Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. While you read, think about the following questions. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? While you read, take notice of what Jack is learning about poetry as he writes his own. Follow along with your book if you have it. Page 6, October 17th. What was up with the Snowy Woods poem you read today? Why doesn't the person just keep going if he's got so many miles to go before he sleeps? And why do I have to tell more about the blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road? Page 7. I don't want to write about that blue car that had miles to go before it slept. So many miles to go in such a hurry. Page 8. October 24th. I am sorry to say it. I did not really understand the Tiger Tiger Burning Bright poem, but at least it sounded good in my ears. Here is the blue car with tiger sounds. Blue car, blue car, shining bright in the darkness of the night. Who could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky? I could see you in the night, blue car, blue car, shining bright. I could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky. Page 9. Some of the tiger sounds are still in my ears like drums, beat, beat, beating. Page 10. October 31st. Yes, you can put the two blue car poems on the board, but only if you don't put my name on them. Page 11. November 6th. They look nice typed up like that on blue paper on a yellow board, but still don't tell anyone who wrote them, okay? And what does anonymous mean? Is it good? Turn to page 3 in your purple workbook. You'll be writing just statements for the section of the book that we just read. We'll be filling out two rows. We'll be filling out October 17th, which are, is pages 6 and 7. And we'll be filling out October 24th through November 6th, which is found on pages 8 through 11. Let's focus on the entry dated October 17th. This is found on pages 6 and 7 in your novel. After reading this, we can think about the gist statement. The gist, of course, is what is that section mostly about? And you could choose one of two gist statements here to record into your workbook. Either Jack doesn't understand the poem about snowy woods, or Jack doesn't want to write more about the blue car. Either one is accurate. You can just choose which one you'd like to go with. And then you're going to look back on pages six and seven to find two to three details from the text that help support your just statement of either Jack doesn't understand the poem about Snowy Woods or Jack doesn't want to write more about the blue car. Pause the video in order to find those details from the text. All right, now you can check your work. If you chose the gist statement, Jack doesn't understand the poem about Snowy Woods, some details that could support that would be that he asks what was up with the Snowy Woods poem. He also asks why the person in the poem doesn't just keep going. Those are two details from the text that you could use to support that gist statement. If you chose the gist statement, Jack doesn't want to write more about the blue car, then the details from the text would be, and why do I have to tell more about the blue car? And I don't want to write about that blue car. Those are actual quotes. Notice that they are in quotation marks, meaning they're directly out of the text. You would write those exactly as they are in the book and put quotation marks around them. 
pause the video in order to find those details from the text. All right, let's turn our attention to pages 8 through 11, which are the entries October 24th and November 6th. And in this section, um, we learn that Jack revises his blue car poem after reading a tiger poem. We don't yet know that tiger poem. We haven't read it, but we are learning that Jack has read a new poem and he's decided to write another poem about his blue car. So that's the gist statement. Copy that down. Now you need to go back to pages 8 through 11 and you need to find at least two details from the text to help support that gist statement that prove that Jack revised or rewrote his blue car poem. Go ahead and do that now. Pause the video in order to do that. Pause the video in order to find those details from the text. Okay, now you can check your work. You could have pulled out the details that say, here is the blue car with tiger sounds. So Jack's actually telling his teacher about the new poem. And also, we find out that Jack lets his teacher put his blue car poems on the board, but only if his name isn't on them. So those are two details that help us figure out the gist statement and help support it, that Jack revises his blue car poem after reading a tiger poem. Okay, after analyzing the pages in our novel, I want you to think, is Jack's attitude towards poetry changing? And I want you to spend a little time thinking about this and pay attention to the fact that Jack lets his teacher put his blue car poems on the board, but only if his name isn't on them. So I want you to think about that detail and answer that question to yourself, is Jack's attitude towards poetry changing? Now we're going to read a poem called Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, and it was written by a poet named Robert Frost. While you read, think about the following questions. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? While you read, take notice of how the poem is written and how it is read. Follow along with your book if you have it. Let's listen to this poem again, this time as I read it. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. This close reading activity is found on page 10 in your reader's notebook or that purple workbook. This page is focused on the poem Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening and Love That Dog, pages 6 and 7. Directions. Read the first two stanzas of Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening aloud with your teacher. Then work to respond to the questions on the right. Question. What is the setting of the poem? How can you tell? Stanzas 1 and 2. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch the woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. 
between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. What is the setting of the poem? How can you tell? As a reminder, setting is where and when a story takes place. So now we're going to underline some details in the poem that help us figure out where and when the story takes place. Details such as whose woods these are, to watch the woods, and then in the second stanza, the last two lines say, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkness, darkest evening of the year. All of these details help us figure out where and when the story takes place. Use the sentence starter that I've given you. The poem is set in blank and it is nighttime. I can tell because it says blank and blank. Use the underline sections, the ones that are underlined in red, to fill in the blanks in your answer. Pause the video if you need more time to complete the answers. What is happening in the first stanza of the poem? What evidence from the poem supports your answer? You're going to look back in the stanzas and you're gonna look for information about what is happening. We're gonna underline this in blue. There'll be details such as in the third line of the first stanza, he will not see me stopping here. And then in the second stanza, the first two lines, it says, my little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. So those are actions that are happening in the stanza, so I can answer this question. Use the following sentence starter to answer this question. In the first stanza, the narrator is blank in the woods. In the poem, it says blank, and you're going to write exactly what it says in the stanza, looking for the words that are underlined in blue. Pause the video if you need more time to complete the answers. Directions. With your group members, Corley reread the second stanza aloud, then work together to answer the question on the right. Second stanza. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. Question. The word queer means strange. Why would the horse think it's strange to stop in the woods? Support your response with details from the poem. You can answer this question using the following sentence starters. The horse might think it's queer or strange to stop because blank. In the poem, it says blank. And notice the quotation marks are there, so you'll write it exactly as it's stated in the poem. Pause the video if you need more time to complete the answers. Directions. Read stanza three once through silently in your head. Then reread stanza three with group members taking turns to each read one line. After reading, work together to answer the questions on the right. Stanza three. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. What words and phrases does Robert Frost use to describe what the horse is doing in the third stanza? To answer this question, you need to look back at the third stanza, and I've underlined it for you in red. It says, he gives his harness bells a shake. The he in this line is referring to the horse. So I know that's what the horse is doing. So now I'm gonna go back to the question and I'm going to answer that question using the sentence starter. In the third stanza, the poet has written blank to help us see what the horse is doing. Fill in the blank, use that information underlined in red to fill in the blank. Next question. What do these words and phrases help you understand about how the horse feels about stopping in the woods? For this part, I'm going back to stanza three, and now I'm gonna underline the next line, line two, to ask if there is some mistake. So the horse is shaking the bells around his neck as if asking if there's some mistake. So now I'm gonna answer that question using the sentence starter 
I think the horse feels strange about stopping in the woods. We already know it feels strange because of that word queer in second stanza that means strange. So I'm using that in the sentence starter and then it says, it says he's asking if blank. And in that blank, you're going to use the, the words that are underlined in blue to fill in the blank for this answer. Pause the video in order to complete the answers in this section. Directions. With a partner in your group, read the fourth stanza aloud twice. Then work with your group members to respond to the questions on the right. Stanza four. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Again, stanza four. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Question, what words does the narrator use to describe the woods? To answer this question, you can use the sentence starter that I have here for you. The narrator says the woods are blank. And you'll notice that in the stanza, I have underlined the line in red that tells you what the narrator says about the woods. Draw a quick sketch below to show what you think the woods look like based on the words the narrator uses. Do that now. Pause the video in order to complete the answers in this section. Next question. How does the narrator feel about the woods? What evidence from the text makes you think so? So again, I'm gonna highlight this first line of the fourth stanza that says the woods are lovely, dark, and deep. And I'm gonna use those words to help answer this question. I'm gonna use the sentence starter. Because the narrator says the woods are lovely, dark, and deep, I think they blank the woods. So in here, you're going to describe how you think the narrator feels about the woods. Answer that now. Pause the video as necessary to complete this response. Pause the video in order to complete the answers in this section. Reread the last two lines of the poem aloud with group members, then consider and discuss. What do you think these last two lines of the poem mean? Use evidence from the text to support your answer. Okay, the last two lines. And miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. Now I have to think to myself, what do those words mean? I need to consider the information in the whole pair in that whole stanza. The woods are lovely, dark and deep but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. So now I'm thinking and then when I respond to this question, I'm gonna use this sentence starter. The last two lines repeat and they say, and miles to go before I sleep. Notice how I'm putting the, that part in quotation marks because I'm taking it directly out of the poem. Then I'm gonna continue on by saying, I think this means the narrator blank. What is it you think the narrator has to do? And so that's what you're going to fill in in that blank. Now the last question in this section. What conflict is the narrator of this poem experiencing? How do you know? The word conflict means a struggle between what you want and what you need. And so thinking about that conflict, I'm gonna reread the last stanza of the paragraph, stanza four. I want you to think about what struggle must the narrator be having between what he wants and what he needs to do. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. To respond to this question, use the sentence starter that I've provided and fill in the blank. 
It sounds like the narrator would love to stay in the woods because he says they are blank, but he has to blank. That is his conflict. Remember, conflict means a struggle between what you want to do and what you need to do. Pause the video in order to complete the answers in this section. All right, let's continue on on page 13, directions. Go back to reread pages six to seven of Love That Dog independently and silently in your head. Then work with group members to answer the questions on the right. Page six, October 17th. What was up with the snowy woods poem you read today? Why doesn't the person just keep going if he's got so many miles to go before he sleeps? And why do I have to tell more about the blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road? I don't want to write about that blue car that had miles to go before it slept. So many miles to go in such a hurry. Turn and talk to a partner about what does Jack have trouble understanding about the Snowy Woods poem? What question does he ask about it? To respond to this question, it's helpful to look at stanza two of Jack's entry. Why doesn't the person just keep going if he's got so many miles to go before he sleeps? You'll notice that I've underlined that portion in red, and you can use that then to help answer the question. You can also use the sentence starter I'm providing for you. Fill in the blanks. In the book, Jack writes blank. I think Jack has trouble understanding why blank. When you fill in this information, you will have a complete answer. Use the section that I have underlined in red to help you fill in the blank. Pause the video in order to complete your response in your workbook. The next section is about Love That Dog, pages 8 and 9. Directions. With group members, read the Tiger poem aloud taking turns to each read one line. Then independently reread pages eight and nine of Love That Dog silently in your head. With, with a partner in your group, read Jack's poem on page eight aloud, taking turns to each read one full stanza. After reading the poem in pages eight and nine, work with group members to answer the questions on the right. Page eight, October 24th. I am sorry to say I did not really understand the Tiger Tiger Burning Bright poem, but at least it sounded good in my ears. Here is the blue car with tiger sounds. Blue car, blue car, shining bright in the darkness of the night. Who could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky? I could see you in the night. Blue car, blue car, shining bright. I could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky. Some of the tiger sounds are still in my ears, like drums, beat, beat, beating. Question. Why does Jack like the tiger poem, even though he doesn't understand what it means? Use details from the text to support your response. Let's look back at stanza one, where Jack says, I am sorry to say I did not really understand the tiger, tiger, burning bright poem, but... At least it sounded good in my ears. So right there, I'm highlighting or underlining that section because it tells me even though he doesn't understand something, that word but right there tells me to pay attention to the rest of it. So to respond, I'm going to use the sentence starter. You can fill in the blanks with the information that's missing. In the text, Jack writes about the tiger poem. He says he doesn't understand it, but blank. And here you can pull a quote right out from the text. Notice I have quotation marks around it. You can take a look at what I've underlined in red to help you fill in the blank. Pause the video as needed in order to complete this work in your workbook. Next question. What similarities do you notice between Jack's revised blue car blue car poem and tiger. Looking at the two poems side by side, the tiger and blue car, blue car, I notice that 
both William Blake and Jack have used repetition in the first line of their poem. William Blake's first line says, Tiger, tiger, burning bright. And Jack's first line says, Blue car, blue car, shining bright. And so both poems use some repetition, which means to repeat words. I also noticed that both of these poems rhyme. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. Bright and night rhyme. And in Jack's poem, blue car, blue car, shining bright in the darkness of the night, he's used the same rhyming words as William Blake did in the poem, The Tiger. So both poems use rhyme. I noticed that both poems have the same structure. They both have four lines in every stanza. And finally, both poems use really strong imagery to help the reader visualize what's going on in the poem. Words like shining bright and the words Jack uses, like a comet in the sky, those really help the reader visualize what's going on in the poem. So all of that information can help you respond to this last question on this page, which is, what similarities do you notice between Jack's revised Blue Car, Blue Car poem and Tiger? You can use the sentence starter. There are many similarities between Jack's poem and the Tiger poem. They both blank, 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 and use blank like blank and blank. Use that chart over to the right to help you fill in the blanks in your response. Pause the video as needed in order to complete this work in your workbook. All right, last page of your close reading activity for today. Using Love That Dog, pages eight and nine. Synthesize. With group members, review your responses to the above questions. Then discuss how you could respond to the question at the right. Based on what Jack's poem, Blue Car, Blue Car, what do you think he has learned about poetry at this point in the novel? Support your response with examples from the text. To help you answer this question, I'm giving you some structure, giving you some sentences, and you just need to fill in the blank with the information found in some of the responses in your workbook. Jack has learned a lot about poetry so far. He has learned blank from reading the poem blank. He has also learned blank from reading the poem blank. His attitude about poetry is also changing because it says blank on page blank. Using this structure, go back and look at what he has learned about different poems and about poetry, and then think about how his attitude is starting to change. And so you're going to want to find evidence of that in the book or in one of your responses in your workbook. All right, good luck. Pause the video as needed in order to finish this in your workbook. Let's review what makes a poem a poem. In lesson two, you learned that poems have structure, which includes lines and stanzas. Stanzas, remember, are a group of lines, kind of like a paragraph. Poems can be free verse, like the red wheelbarrow. And poems use lots of imagery words or phrases that help an author imagine what is happening in the poem or visualize what's happening in the poem. After conducting our close reading today of the novel as well as the two poems, we can add to our chart what makes a poem a poem. Today we learned that poems can rhyme and the rhyming means that they sound alike at the ends of the lines. So words like no, though, snow, shake, mistake, flake, all those words rhyme. We learned that some authors use repetition, like Robert Frost when he said, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Or like William Blake who said, tiger, tiger, burning bright. And finally we learned that a lot of poetry has rhythm to it. Poems can have a rhythm or a beat much like a song does. So if you listen to the lines from this poem, he gives his harness bells a shake, 
to ask if there is some mistake. You can kind of hear the rhythm of the words and it, it just sort of adds a lot to the poetry when you hear that rhythm and that beat. All right, now at this point, there are some questions I want you to ask yourself. And you can pause the video at any time to give yourself some time to think about responses to these questions. You don't need to record them anywhere. Just have those thoughts in your mind. What are your thoughts or feelings about poetry now? Have they changed after reading the book and the poem? Are your thoughts and feelings similar or different from Jack's? So again, go ahead and pause the video to think about the answers to these questions. Your next steps. Reread pages 6 and to 11 of Love That Dog and the poem Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Read these poems aloud to practice your fluent reading skills. Then you need to pick out one vivid word or phrase, each from Jack's poem Blue Car, Blue Car, and one from Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening to add to the vivid words and phrases section of your poetry journal. And finally, begin reading your book for independent reading. These are your homework steps to prepare you for the next day's lesson. End of lesson three.